Hi everyone, welcome back to Astro Blake. So today I'm going to fit a ZWO electronic automatic focuser to the Altair Astro RC8. This is one of the GSO style uh, Richard Kretchen scopes. They say that the focuser is not actually compatible with this uh, focuser, um, but there are things that you can do to make it fit. I'm just going to turn the focuser over for you. So one of the problems that a lot of people have with it is that the base of this focuser is actually curved inwards and that causes a bit of a problem with the purchase uh, of the, the actual bracket that holds the focuser. So it's actually got a gap underneath which isn't ideal at all. The things you're going to need to do this, obviously you're going to need your automatic focuser. But what I purchased was the um, Takahashi mount. Uh, this is the bracket for the Takahashi scope. And this works really well. So I've got this uh, purchase, it's not, not overly expensive, I think it was 20 odd pounds. So you need that bracket to do a really good job. I've ordered, well, I've actually got a very low, I'm just going to show you these actually, because they're very, not very good price. These are from eBay, these are M2, M3, which you'll need for this, and M4, variable length steel hex uh, uh, bolts, and I've also got various washers. This comes with washers as well. These are not expensive, they're about £10 for a box off of eBay and you get so many bolts and screws that you'll need for anything like this that's the best way of buying it won't cost you too much so what you'll need to replace the bolts that are in here are two M3 bolts at 20mm and I also put in two M3 bolts of 15mm although they are not uh, completely necessary I ordered offline a thumb screw to replace the one that's there, it needs to be longer. This has got a 15mm thread which is long enough. If you uh, can't source something like this, I initially was just using a slightly longer M3 bolt with a washer and I just would do that up and that would, because this, this bolt's important, it puts the tension on the bar to stop this from sliding and allow the turning of the knob to actually move the, the focuser in and out. The final thing, and I've put um, in the description, I've put a link to the website, and there's a plan on there for a 3D printer to print off this. And what this does is actually fill the curvature up and give you a flat surface to mount on. This isn't essential, but it is actually uh, makes the mounting a much more uh, secure and professional job. So it is worth doing. A big shout out to my friend Richard who got these printed for me because I do not have a 3D printer and I don't know anyone who does. But luckily for me, a friend of mine does know someone that has one and the person kindly printed this off for me. So thank you ever so much for that. Um, I'm very grateful. But as I say, I'll put a link in the description so that if you want to get one printed, you can. To fit the focuser, first thing we've got to do is remove the single side of the uh, focus, and that's a little grub screw here. And it's, uh, we just get that undone, and it's a little bit tight, and that twists off. Just put that somewhere safe in case we ever need to replace it. I'm going to take out the screw that puts the tension onto the bar, and that'll mean now the focus will move in and out very easy. This will have a tendency to flop out, so be aware of that. It can pull all the way out, but try and keep it in place, and uh, then you won't have to take the whole thing off to rebuild things. So, with the uh, Takahashi mount, you've got two little bolts that uh, put the L bracket on there. What we need to do 
is mount this and I, I actually put the center hole where the uh, thumb screw goes in that's the at the end slot and then you'll find that the four slots down is where the mount uh, the mount bolts in the focuser will hold this in place and that's where we're going to be putting the 20 mil m3 bolts and I've got two here I've put washers on them and they'll give you the correct reach to go in so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove those two bolts out now I leave the other ones in place if you take all four off this this whole thing because of the weight at one end it will just fall off and then you've got to try and hold it in place and it's one of those jobs where you feel like you need uh, three hands or four hands to do it so the printed uh, piece can go on there it's got all the holes and they all line up nicely Get it lined up and then put the bracket on top with the end slot over the middle. Now I'm going to put the thumb screw in here. I'll try that again without dropping the washer. So let me try again. So you always feel like you need more than one pair of hands to do these jobs. So what this will do is just hold it in place for me. So I'm just gonna very gently line it up. And I'm gonna just move the camera in a second and show you how that's all lined up. So here you can see the adapter just being held lightly in place with this. You can get all the holes nicely lined up and that's how it's gonna mount on. When you go, if you go to the website that's in the description that shows the printing plan for this piece. It shows this actual adapter mounted just on one side because it's not wide enough. Sorry for my filming there. It's not quite wide enough to get both screws in. I've seen some people cut hot wider holes in these, but that's not something I'd like to do. So what they've done is they've mounted it just on one line, so it's slightly offset. Um, what I'm sure it works perfectly well but that's not how I like to do it so it's much better I think to buy this adapter so the next job is to take the 20 mil m3 bolts just make sure I've got the out right Allen key and these are now going to go into these mounting slots Make sure you've got a washer on there so you've got a nice even bit of pressure. I think the head of the bolt would actually bite on the, uh, the mount but I would definitely suggest a washer to give you a really good per bit of purchase there and it'll mount properly. Right now we don't want to over tighten anything so nice and gently just take up the slack make sure everything is in line so it looks like that just needs pushing up just a little bit so a little twist there just want to push this up I'm just gonna slacken that off oh there we go that allowed that to move and I want them there I'm just gonna tighten that up again so you want everything nice and square nothing twisted and then we can very gently take the slack out of these bolts and we just want it nice and firm but what we don't want to do is over tighten anything but of course it's got to be tight enough to work that feels nice that's nice that's nice and firm okay good right so as I say you could leave these two as they are for me um, 
well, I just, I don't know. I felt like I just wanted to make it neater and get that and get that um, plastic bit held down in the four points that are available. So now it's been held this side, I can undo these two. Just undo them. enough and these can't be as long as a 20 mil because you haven't got the depth of this to take up so these are 15 mil and they've got a washer on so they don't go straight through the hole like the bolts I've just taken out and again making sure that everything is nice and square and don't over tighten just nip these up and get some pressure on there now the way that this focuser works is um, there's pressure there's a metal bar that presses against this plate that's on this uh, focus tube and the friction moves it up and down it's a very simple way of working and it does work I mean there's some extremely expensive fancy focusers out there and this is very simple in its design but it works so as long as you look after it, it won't give you any problems. If you undo this thumb screw now, that's all in place. You can see that, and this is the, the metal piece that it all slides up and up and down on. So the, the pressure on the bar gives you the friction, but obviously you need enough uh, pressure for it to move it, but you also want it to be able to hold the weight of your imaging train. So I'm just having a look there. That's a little bit loose, so I'm gonna now that that centre one's undone, so I'm just going to make sure these are nipped up a bit more and that these are actually supporting the bracket, not the centre pin. Otherwise I'll end up over tightening that, that's much better and nice and holding that nicely now and just make sure these are tight. Good, okay. Everything looks quite nice, nice and square, holding nicely. So the next job, we're going to just get the focuser roughly, I think that's for looking at the marks, that's roughly where it's in focus. I'm just going to tighten that up a little bit, make sure that that's holding. We don't want it too tight. Right, a little bit tighter than that. That's good. Make sure the focuser works, which it does. Good, everything working good. Right, so the next job is to actually put the electronic focuser on. So we select the correct flexible adapter. One end goes on the uh, focuser and the other end goes on the spindle of the uh, the focuser on the telescope so there's no hole here for the grub screw so you can only go in a certain depth so what the best thing to do is get it in as far as it will let you go snugly and then we'll pinch that onto the onto the spindle On your focuser, the spindle here normally has a flat side. You want that in line with one of the rub screws that you've got pointing down. And we'll replace that in and we'll make sure it goes in enough for the grub screws to be able to locate on the spindle and that you're flush up against the bracket. That looks good. So I'm actually gonna just nip these up and hold it in place. And what I'll do is, I won't tighten it too much, I'll finish off by tightening up at the end. We just want to hold the focuser in place at the moment. These screws come with the actual focuser in the kit, with a washer on, and these allow you to mount. There's two little uh, mounting holes on the front of the focus unit. 
that locate into there. And always fiddly, but take your time and they'll go in. As I say, this is the um, third video I've made on the uh, ZWO EAF installation. Um, and at the end of this video, there will be a link to installing this focuser on or this electronic automatic focuser on a Newtonian scope and also onto a refractor, a William Optics uh, Z61. Okay, just make sure everything again is nice and square and we just give these a little turn. Make sure they're located before you start tightening up, otherwise you'll find them even harder to get into the correct holes and we just nip them up again don't over tighten things so that's looking good that is nice nice and firm and that looks like that's installed quite nicely good I'm quite happy with that everything being held nicely so what I'm going to do now is just nip these up and what we'll need to do now is get this fired up in Nina. I'm just going to loosen off this now which will allow things to turn so I can just tighten up all the nuts. I've just got one that I just need to get to and I think if we just push this down here it's going to let me get to it. Yeah. Let me just nip that up. And then we just set the tension with the nut and then that is the electronic automatic focuser attached to the RC8. Let me just show you a closer picture. And there you can see it all installed. I'm just going to take you around to the side and show you how the printed piece fills that little curvature giving a nice platform for you to mount the focuser on. So at the end of the video there are links to my other installations of this focuser and if you have any questions at all please put them in the comments section for me and I will do my best to answer them and I hope this has helped at some point and if you want to put a focus electronic automatic focuser on an RC8 no problem okay until next time everyone clear skies